can ChatGPT write a sermon? We're putting this AI chatbot to the test to see how you can use this tool for sermon prep. Let's get into it. So Matt, what is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is a neural network learning model. No, no, I almost fell asleep saying Sorry. that out loud. That's the boring definition, that's the boring name for what it is. What it really is, is it's a program that has been trained to write like a human. That's not scary at all. ChatGPT was developed by a company called OpenAI, um, and what they did is they took uh, they used 175 billion parameters to train its language model. What that means is they took 175 billion different articles and posts and papers and just written content online and fed it to this machine so it could gobble it up and spit out content that feels and looks and sounds like it was written by a human being. Someone told me that they basically took the internet and put it into a machine that knows the entire internet. And it <laughs> yeah, like almost, somehow expresses almost. the internet intelligibly. And it's pretty wild and it's very intuitive and it's very impressive and probably a lot of your friends are talking about it. You've certainly read about it on the news, seen posts about it on social media. So if you're watching this video, I know you're curious about what it can do. And you're also probably a pastor or a church worship leader or church leader of some kind that's wondering if you can use this tool to help you in your role at your church or in your ministry. So we're going to put it, like I said, to the test and see fun. what it can do. Uh, so what I'm thinking is, let's say you're a pastor and you are getting ready to write a sermon. Okay. So let's see if this, this tool, ChatGPT, can be used to get you ready for a sermon. So I actually already have a sermon or a, an idea for a sermon, but you, you can honestly use this for sermon inspiration. Let's say you're starting from scratch okay. and you don't have anything ready to go and you need to have something prepared and ready for Sunday. So let's say I want to preach a sermon on like the book of Hebrews. Okay. Let's go ahead and just feed it into ChatGPT. We're going we're gonna to take this for a spin and show everybody how this works. All right. So I want to preach a sermon on the book of Hebrews. What are some good sermon topics from that book? Enter. And now it tells right. us. And it's off to the races. There are many great sermon topics that can be derived from the book of Hebrews. Here are a few ideas to get you started. The superiority of Christ, the perseverance of the saints, the importance of rest, uh, and on it goes for the high priestly ministry of Christ. I don't even know how many prompts it's going to give me. This is amazing. <laughs> so this is giving us topical prompts as opposed to getting into expository preaching here. Well, it is topical, but it also gives you the passages that are relevant to that topic so that you can at least dive into and maybe use that as like a sermon title, the danger of drifting away. And maybe not be topical, still be expository, but still have like a lot of content and some of the, some of the sermon ready to go. All right. Now I got to point out, it just ended at seven. So I think that's kind of funny that out of all the numbers, it could give you it gave you seven <laughs> <laughs> it's the number of holiness the number of perfection and completeness so that's a, that's an example of how fast and intuitive chat gpt is now i've been using chat gpt a lot for the past few months it, it kind of hit the ground back in january that's when it entered the public eye that's when i became aware of it yeah. and started seeing what it does to see if i could use it at work or help other people learn how to use it as well um in that time, it has already improved and become a lot faster and a lot more powerful and a lot more intuitive. Yeah. I've just been using the free version of this the entire time. You actually have subscribed for the paid level. I subscribe for the paid yeah. one just because I don't like to wait. Like, even though that was pretty fast, <laughs> yeah. but like whenever I use mine and I ask it anything, it's like, ah, it's just instantaneous. Um, but really, I mean, what's so cool is like as a church leader, you want access to a tool like this. Yes. You don't have to pay for it. It's don't free. You don't have to pay for it. It's entirely free. So let's just give them another example of, of what this does. Let's, let's check this out. We'll open up a new chat. Let's say uh, I want to preach on the a Abrahamic. It would be nice if I learned how to spell. I bet you can misspell it and it'll know what you're talking about. Yeah, though. it's pretty intuitive like that. Covenant. 
what are, are some good passages hmm, that cover God's covenant with Israel? So this is Please. like very specific, yeah. man. And here's the thing about this. The more specific you are, the better the responses are. So if I say, let's, let's go ahead and add a, another qualifier to this prompt. Not just that I want to cover the Abrahamic covenant, God's covenant with Israel. Let's tell it to please include verses, verses from both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And again, it has to think for a second and then it's, and then it's off. The Abrahamic covenant is a significant aspect of God's relationship with Israel and has been mentioned in several passages, Old Testament. And it's going to segment this by the Testament. It starts with Genesis, working through <laughs> several passages in Genesis because that's where, it's, that's where it's established. And then the New Testament, Galatians 3, chapter, uh, verses 6 through 9, uh, and, it, and on and on it goes. Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 25. You can start to see how powerful and how useful this is. Yeah. Um, now, you probably will want to verify some of this. Yeah, I'm looking right now at some of the verses just to see if those are actually the verses. Um, <laughs> because I have come across, like, yeah. there are a lot of times where ChatGPT, it, it quotes verses, and those are exactly the verses and everything. And then there are other times where I've looked at it, and I'm like, I don't know, that's not even a translational thing. That is just not even the right <laughs> verse. So you, you definitely have to warn you. <laughs> verify the results that ChatGPT gives you, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. So, so now that we've shown off how ChatGPT works, at least the basics, you know, how to enter a prompt and see what it can give you in response, let's dive a little bit further. Let's, let's create a whole scenario and walk our way through building a sermon from the ground up. So from start to finish, from start to using finish. this tool. Now we've already jumped into like sermon or inspiration. Let's say I have a sermon idea. I've already got an idea for what my sermon is going to be about. Okay. Let's say, like, let's have this scenario of I want to preach a sermon on Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, which is Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple uh, must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. It's, okay. like, it's, it's that very crucial verse, right? So let's, well, I, want to, I want to preach a sermon on denying ourselves and follow Jesus. So let's just kind of walk our way through how to build this out. Okay. So I am going to feed ChatGPT what I already have. So I want to write a sermon on denying ourselves and following Jesus. Do you understand? And this is different. I'm asking a question. I'm qualifying this with a question at the end of my prompt before running my actual request. So you're treating this as like a conversation that you're having with the robot. So well, that's, that's how ChatGPT was trained. It wasn't just fed a ton of data and information so that it could spit it out. It was trained how to communicate in a conversational way. So you can actually, so far all I've done is just enter a prompt and it's given a response. And I've moved on to the next prompt and a response. Now I'm actually going to enter into a conversation with this. Okay. So I've said, I want to write a sermon on denying ourselves and following Jesus. Do you understand? And the reason why I ask that question is because I don't want it to just start writing the sermon. Okay. If I hadn't ended the, with that question... It would, it would just have, start writing the sermon. It would have run off with that sermon. And I don't want to do that yet because I want to feed it more information. And we'll get into why that's important a little bit later. So I've got this prompt. I want you to write a sermon. Do you understand? And it says, yes, denying oneself and following Jesus is a central theme in Christian theology and discipleship. Blah, 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 blah. Some really good content there. Now I want you to provide me with an outline. I'm going to ask, do, uh, now I want you to provide me with an outline for this sermon. And what's funny, like even though you misspelled now, I mean, you could have just left as is, it probably is gonna yeah. not matter. However, well, the worse your spelling and grammar is, the harder it is for it to understand you, but a little typo sense, like yeah. that is gonna be okay. <laughs> All right, now here's the thing, I'm gonna qualify it and fill it with more information about what I want, just, okay. to, just to feed it a little more context so that its responses are more relevant to my needs. Okay. So keep in mind, this sermon is to a Christian audience. Uh, you, can, uh, you can obviously add whatever qualifier you want. Like you could say to a Catholic audience or to a 
Southern Baptist audience or to a Pentecostal audience or something like that. And so, so you, it's going to write specifically towards that yes. audience. Okay. Yes. It'll pull information that it's it, it learned from the internet that those kinds of people need or want or how they speak. Okay. So uh, I want you to write for a Christian audience. I need you to write as if you are a pastor with 10 years of preaching experience. So you can basically make it turn itself into a character, like take on a persona as it writes and converses with you. So that's yeah. what I'm prompting it to do here. And obviously you can enter in your years of experience. It doesn't have to be 10 years in this prompt. I would just tell it 200 years of experience. <laughs> oh, it's even more. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, and again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cap it with a question so that it doesn't yet run off with this, uh, with this outline. And even though there it goes, it's running off with the outline, that's actually okay. Because again, this is a conversation. It's not like it's responding now and it's over. I have to move on to the next thing. I can say something in, re yeah. in response to this. Okay. So once it's done... What I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I, I already know the main verse because it's not feeding me any verses yet. It's, there it is on the conclusion. Uh, I, the main verse is Matthew uh, 16, verse, I think I said 24. I want to focus on self-sacrifice. So now I'm also feeding it the topic and the focus of this okay. sermon. So getting more specific. However, I want to end the sermon with a call to action for members members <laughs> to give up their comfort and their future do you well, actually you know what they've it's already sent me the sort of the outline so now i'm just going to go ahead and ask it just to re edify that uh, that's that outline. And it's already assuming you want an updated outline and everything. Yeah, yeah that's so cool. there it goes. Great. Thank you for providing that additional information. Here's the introduction. Uh, first point, self-sacrifice, what it means to deny ourselves. Third point, following Jesus, why it matters. Fourth, the cost of self-sacrifice. And it's giving me sub points underneath that as prompts for what kind of uh, topics or material to cover in each of those sections. The benefit of doing this is I have to, if I ever have to preach, I'm already creating an outline and it can yep. take me a couple of hours to like do not just do the study, but take everything that I've already read and learned and want to talk about and formulate it into something cohesive and having chat GPT feed me a structured outline. that's already very well uh, focused and has a nice flow and it's very cohesive. And it did it in 15 seconds. And it, yeah, it did it in 15 <laughs> seconds. It takes like all everything we just did took two or three minutes. It would have taken me a couple of hours to have an outline that I would be satisfied with. Yeah. Now I can take this, watch here. I've actually got a document open already. I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna copy this and just paste it into, there we go, this outline. And I can change the format just to get rid of that black background. But this is already content that I can use. And all I have to do is take this really excellent content and change it to fit my needs, whatever whatever that needs to be. So I just shaved an hour or two off of my weekly sermon prep. And I think it just blows my mind that you're able, because that can be one of the hardest things when you're preaching or if you're speaking to people on this or that, or just trying to get thoughts together and it just does all that. And then from there, you can keep prompting it and prompting it because you may like yeah. aspects of it, but other aspects you don't like and really just kind of hammer in on it. So that's using ChatGPT to create a sermon outline. Let's let's go even further. Let's let's continue this conversation with this robot. <laughs> this is getting scary. All right. <laughs> so let's say, um, are there other verses where Jesus calls someone to follow him. And so now I'm using like researching verses or doing cross-referencing in the Bible. So that way it can be not just a topical sermon, but a sermon that reaches through the rest of scripture to have scripture interpret scripture. That's the important, that's something important that a lot of pastors have to juggle and manage with their sermons. Yeah. I can already tell, just look at this. So Matthew four nineteen, come follow me. Jesus said, and I will I'll show you how to fish for people. So that's a new living translation, just because I've always made fun of that translation because <laughs> I 
I've grown up with saying fishers of men, not yes. how to fish for people. Um, but I just Now, think. I've seen it sometimes when I do this, it will tell me what translation it's using and sometimes it doesn't. Oh, it's, really? Yeah. It'll, okay. it'll give like the abbreviation so, of the translation next to it. So then you could have even prompted that further and said, are there any other verses, blah, 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 and then say, give me these verses in whatever translation, like yeah. ESV, N NKJ, whatever. Yes, exactly. And it would have done, it would have <laughs> done exactly that. So let's crazy. say, uh, give me these verses in the KJV, and it'll it'll run through the KJV. Here are the oh same verses gosh, in the KJV. That's unreal. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So you can even use your preferred pref your preferred uh, translation, Bible translation, which most of us that are preaching, speaking in front of people, have a certain we version of the Bible. Are very yeah. particular about what we like to read, or and some some people like to read in one, study in another, and preach out of another. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So that's researching verses. Uh, now I can take this again and add it to that document and just use, I can later sprinkle these I want to help you, Matt. See that little clipboard right there? Oh, what? Copy. Now. Oh my goodness. Now paste. I think that's going to do something cool for you. Let's see if it actually does what I think it does. Yeah. Oh man. You learned something, learned new, something today. new today. <laughs> yes, I sure did. Thank you very much. All right. So that's researching verses. I now have an outline that's structured, has a nice flow. I have yeah. other verses that I can work into the sermon as I flesh it out and and build out the rest of the content. Uh, let's say, let's say I need to create like a really compelling illustration, just a um, an analogy or something that I share with the the congregation to help drive home the point. Okay. So let's all right. Let's say I need I need an illustration. By the way, this is I think is probably where ChatGPT shines the most. To share with the congregation at the beginning of this sermon. Please make it funny and entertaining. Keep in mind you are writing for a Christian audience. Make the illustration. 250 words. Okay. Long. So you can be very specific and give it exact parameters for what you're looking for. And, and this right here, I mean, this is kind of insane to be able to have it prompt. I'm curious to see if it's going to do a good job. Let's see. Sure. Here's an illustration or analogy that you could use. And man, it's fast. Like it's, it's thinking through this and producing content at a much faster rate than I could even type this. Well, if I even already knew everything I wanted to put in. Well, and I think this kind of goes back to the difference between ChatGPT and Google Search, because they are very similar in some yeah. regard, because you, there are tools that you're using to find information. They're and they're gathering all of the internet and presenting it to you in something that it thinks is relevant to your request. Yeah, and it's just Google does it one way and ChatGPT does it another. Oh. And that's what, when I did like the verse research, asking for more verses, if I did that on Google, it would serve me multiple links and I would have to click through each one to find a few verses that would be relevant to the topic that I put into the query. And sometimes like that first link, Google's pretty good at giving you what you're looking for, but a lot of times that first, second, third one isn't, yeah. isn't actually that helpful. It's the fourth and fifth one and it takes time to sort through all that. ChatGPT just gives it to you. So I'm looking at this. Now, I've never seen any of this. Uh, can I read it? Yeah, I'm go just, ahead. All right. So this is the illustration that it's giving us, um, and it's almost done. So I'm just going to start reading this illustration that it, it just made on the spot. Have you ever been on a road trip with friends or family and had to stop at a rest area to use the restroom? Maybe you were in a hurry and didn't want to take time to stop, or maybe you were enjoying the ride and didn't want to interrupt the fun. But eventually your bladder couldn't take it anymore and you just had to pull over. Um, now, imagine instead of that rest area, you're driving through the middle of nowhere with no gas stations, no convenience stores or restaurants in sight. And instead of a restroom, you need food and water to survive. You start to feel the pangs of hunger and thirst and you know you can't ignore them any longer. You need to find some sustenance or you won't make it to your destination. <laughs> This is what it means to deny ourselves and follow Jesus. All right. So first of all, I mean, that, that, it's that's, not great. It's not great. <laughs> it's not great. But um, I'm sure you could probably prompt the mess out of this thing to make it great. Um, that's kind of wild, man. So let's say let's let's change this. Let's say uh, write a 250 word illustration 
about giving something up that is precious to follow Jesus. Watch it like take a hodgepodge of like Lord of the Rings and like other things to do it. Now imagine you're a young boy with a prized possession, a baseball signed by your favorite player. Now I want to go watch the same lot. <laughs> you love that baseball more than anything else in the world. You take it with you everywhere you go, showing it off to your friends and admiring it when you're alone. It's more than just a baseball to you. It's a symbol of all the memories you've had with your favorite player and all the joy you've experienced playing the game you love. Now imagine Jesus comes to you and asks you to give up that baseball in order to follow him. Now at first you hesitate. How can you give up something that is so precious to you? How can you imagine life without it? But then you realize something. Following Jesus is worth more than an earthly possession. The joy and fulfillment you'll experience by following him far outweighs the temporary pleasure you get from your baseball. So with a heavy heart, you give up your beloved baseball and choose to follow Jesus. So that's a little bit better. It's a little better. It's getting a little bit better. <laughs> But, but again, this is just taking... It's crazy. It's taking information from the internet and compiling it in a way that sounds cohesive and natural and human. It's not going to be spirit-filled. No. It's not going to be thoroughly compelling. No. It's going to be average at best. And you can take that and copy and paste it into your document like I've been doing and change it later to make it something much better and more inspiring. And I feel like that's where I found personally where ChatGPT shines is it gives you like a good, I don't want to say foundation because the foundation of everything we do when it comes to discipleship and everything is the word of God and that you don't want to say that, but it gives you a good starting point for mm -hmm. research and stuff, which those things can take a lot of time. And this just makes us blow right through that. Yes. So now let's move on. We've already got a, we've got a decent illustration that we can take and improve upon later and make it something that's a little more relevant and impactful for yeah. our congregation. And that's another limitation of ChatGPT is like it doesn't know who your people are. It doesn't know your congregation. Only you do. That's why it's up, still up to you to make this worthwhile and make this something that will actually help your people. Um, let's do, let's show off something that I think is one of the most impressive parts of ChatGPT. That wasn't already impressive, all no. the other stuff? <laughs> the, the OpenAI trained this language model on 95 human languages. So that's, there's also like programming and developing and coding yeah. languages that it knows, but it knows 95 human languages and that includes Greek and Hebrew. Oh man. So. Let's have some fun. Let's use this to translate the biblical text. So let's say, um, let's see, uh, what is, what is the ancient Greek word for uh, deny in Matthew sixteen twenty four? That's our theme verse for this sermon. And I just want to point out, like, pastors pay for tools like these and yes. everything, and this is free. Yes. So the ancient Greek word for deny in Matthew chapter 16 is aparneomai, which means to deny, disown, renounce, or reject. So you can use ChatGPT to help unlock it further insights in the original biblical text so that original language can speak to your people in the here and now. And I bet what's even crazy, because you, you got my mind thinking through this, Matt. Yeah. I feel like you could probably even ask it, like, give me like an, a popular sermon from a popular preacher that preached on Matthew 16, 24, whatever. And it would probably give you some of those as well. Or you can incorporate aspects of it or a story from it. I mean, there's just so much I'm just thinking about now. Uh, let's see. Um, did, let's see, did uh, Charles Stanley. Oh, gosh, you're getting deep, man. Ever preach on Matthew... 1624. Let's see if it gives us a, a good response. And you misspelled Matthew, yeah. but I bet it's not even going to matter. Uh-oh, I so don't have access have... to the complete preaching archives of Stanley, but it is very likely that he has <laughs> preached on Matthew 1624 at some point during his ministry. So it, it does, and that's again another example of it being very intuitive. Even when it doesn't know the answer, it still explains who Charles Stanley was it understands that Charles Stanley probably <laughs> preached on Matthew 16, 24, and it is correct. So even though it didn't give me what I needed, it's still impressive. Now, let's say I want to write a whole sermon series. 
Because one of the biggest gifts you can give yourself as a pastor is a series. <laughs> that way you don't have to come up with fresh content every week. You know what's next. And the second best gift is a sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So I want to write a five-week, and obviously you can make this as long as you need to, sermon yeah, yeah. series on carrying our cross and following Jesus. Do you understand? And I am full of typos today. Look at that. All right, let's fix that. Here we go. Yes, I understand you want to write a five-week sermon series. Okay, so please, let's see, or I want to, here we go. I want to uh, plan the series with you. I need five sermon titles and a main passage for each sermon. Remember, the theme of these sermons is self-sacrifice and following Jesus. Do you understand? Okay, so yes, I understand, blah, blah, blah. Here are five sermon titles and main passages for a series on carrying our cross and following Jesus. So week one, The Cost of Discipleship. I'm already on board. I'm a big fan of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I'm currently reading The Cost of Discipleship. <laughs> All right, week two, Self-Denial, Matthew 16, 24 through 26. And it's giving me, I mean, it gave me the, the main passage that I entered earlier for the second week, but it's, it's offering and suggesting other great passages for each one. Week five, Abiding in Christ. This sermon will focus on the importance of abiding in Christ and the fruit that comes from a life fully surrendered to Him. I hope these sermon titles and main passages are helpful in planning your series on carrying a cross and following Jesus. It's so far looking really good. I mean, I just looked up, you know, John 15, 1 through 11, just to verify. And it indeed is talking about I am the vine, he is the branches, all that. So it's wow. Yeah. So I'm copying and pasting that. So I've got the next five weeks of sermons plotted out. Gosh, that's so unreal, man. And Being able I, to just cut if, down. And if I have time, I could take each one of these and drop that into a new conversation in ChatGPT, and it could give me the uh, the outline. Just and, like we and did. An illustration. And I could do some more Greek or Hebrew translation to unlock the the, the meaning of some of these words and help the, the congregation understand. Yeah. So not only am I planning out the sermon series, but I can use ChatGPT to plan out each sermon in the series. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, now that we have a sum, now that we have the the sermon series plotted out, let's say, all right, I need, I need a summary for the sermon you helped write an outline for earlier in the conversation. I need this summary to be 125 words long. Do you understand? And I could see how helpful this would be when you're wanting to like make little snippets to put on social media and stuff like that yes. to coincide with that. That's exactly why. Um, not only can Man. you use this to help you like write your sermon or at least plan and prepare and, and give you structure, but like as you share these sermons on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and any other platform, you can use this to give you a quick summary and you can give it the param you can tell ChatGPT whatever parameters you need. Like you can say instead of instead of 125 words long, let's say uh, rewrite that summary in 240 characters. And so that way it's a big tweet. Yeah, now it's a tweet. Big old tweet. Uh, right a there. Real big old tweet. <laughs> so this will help you share your sermons online. And not only will, will it give you these summaries, but you can also use it for SEO. Yeah. Uh, if you are if you're familiar with SEO, Wes, why don't you tell them what SEO is? So basically, optimizing your website uh, to be able to be discovered by the people you want to discover it. Yes. So whenever someone types a query into Google, uh, Google feeds them a list of links. Uh, the most likely thing that Google thinks that person is looking for, they put at top. Yeah. And then they they scour the internet looking for content that that person needs, and they base it off of like what kind of keywords or in that post, or in that article, or in that link. Uh, if you know SEO, and you know how to do like um, keyword planning and keyword research, and you know what the people in your area are searching or looking for, you can feed that into ChatGPT. So like for this, 
uh, we're talking about following Jesus, carrying your cross, laying down your burdens. Let's say, what, what's a good key word for this? Let's say... And we're getting into a realm that's way yeah. outside of what most pastors would even need right, to do. Right, but like if you're honest. a church leader, let's say you're not the pastor. You're like the media uh, director or, or, you know, just someone who's in charge of media. Communications, Communications, whatever. your social media director. Or maybe you're just like the uh, secretary and you're, the pastors ask you to like add summaries and descriptions to each sermon <laughs> that they post on the website and you want to just sig- boost that signal. You can do a little bit of this. You can think through like the topics and say, please add X, Y, Z keywords into the summary. So I can ask it to rewrite that summary with these keywords. Well, and that, and that kind of brings like, so like, let's say your church admin and the pastor gives you the entire outline for the entire sermon. And you want to like summarize that in like a hundred words or less mm-hmm. so, and then put that on social media and stuff. You can actually paste that entire outline into chat GPT, and then it'll give you that quick summary. Mm-hmm. And so it works the other way around, not just yeah. generating the outlines and content for you, but being able for you to put all that back into it so it can give you condensed versions of things and stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. It's really crazy. It can save you a lot of time. And also, let's be honest, if there's anything chat GPT knows, it's what people have been spending their time and attention on on the internet. So yeah. <laughs> it knows how to write good content for social media. It knows how to produce something that has the keywords and the hashtags and the this and that to make it stand out and be what people post on the internet and yeah. what gets a lot of traction. That's so crazy. You can use this to signal boost your sermons and get it out there and hopefully help more people find the gospel. And this is just one little aspect. I mean, we have just focused on the one tiny little area of just one, sermon this prep is and stuff. one application, just yeah. sermon prep. Uh, I actually wrote an article, uh, the 11 chat GPT prompts for church leaders. It's a, 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 like a prompt boot camp with some more ideas and some more uses and use cases for chat GPT for church leaders. So go ahead and check that out. I've got a link in the description below. Um, but even beyond just this use case, Uh, If you're using ChatGPT and you're just getting started and you're wanting to know exactly how this can help you in your role in your ministry, you just need to be aware there are some limitations, even though this is very impressive. This is is an incredible tool. Um, ChatGPT is not always accurate. That's something that you are hinting at throughout. And even I, as someone who is the paid subscriber that has GPT-4, which is even better than this. Way faster, uh, way more intuitive. Well, it's, it's actually not faster, but it actually gives you responses that are even more human yes. and stuff, which is really scary. <laughs> um, but uh, it's still not always 100% accurate. And so that's mm-hmm. like the biggest thing is we have to, everything it gives you, you have to like look at it and say, is this factual? Is this verse actually saying what ChatGPT says it says? Because I've found multiple situations where it is slightly off or it is completely just not right at all. Yeah, and so we have to like always do that. The mantra of trust but verify yes. definitely applies. Um, uh, also, Chad GPT is not a theologian. It's not a scholar. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also not a pastor, regardless of whether or not you consider yourself a theologian or you're like a classically trained scholar. You're a pastor. Uh, you know your people. And it's still up to you to offer your people a word from God. Uh, you can ask it to write you a sermon. I didn't because it's not going to give you a really compelling, spirit-filled no. uh, uh, sermon that has insight and discernment that your people need. A chatbot does not have the passion of preaching. It does not. It doesn't. No. Uh, at the very best, ChatGPT's content and responses are like uh, a high school English essay that would maybe earn like a B minus. Uh, yeah, even though it, it recently it did pass the bar, by the way, uh, which is crazy. <laughs> but it's still like it, but, speaking sermon wise. No, I mean, that's that's one use of ChatGPT that is impressive. But I'm talking like when it comes to generating long form written content, not just spitting out knowledge about like the law and the intricacies of the law, but intuitively grabbing multiple different topics and themes and ideas and and pinning them together into something very useful and thoughtful. Yeah. Um, the content that ChatGPT puts out is typically 
like impressive, but not amazing. It's, it's almost like politically correct in a way. And it's very much cold in some regard. Like if you use it a lot, it starts to sound, all of its responses, regardless of the topic you're talking about, all start to sound the same. Yeah. Because it's just internet speak. And it's, again, it's been given parameters by OpenAI on, like, OpenAI is guiding how it responds and what it considers appropriate content and inappropriate content. So you have to be aware of what this tool is capable of, but also, like, its limitations and its drawbacks and just some of the little nuances about this tool and, and how it's being designed. Um, it can't help you do the real work of shepherding your flock like counseling or mentoring. It absolutely cannot do that for you. Yeah. Um, it can be used as an aid to your creativity and your wisdom and your insight. And it can help like take a lot of time off of your plate. Like it, it can, it can reduce the time you're spending on these menial tasks of sermon prep Yeah. so that you have more time to do other things like counseling and mentoring and the real work of ministry. Um, so just to give you some tips, uh, for using ChatGPT effectively, if you're going to do the deep dive into this tool, uh, first off, generic prompts get generic responses. Yeah, if you, you, it's, it put you put in what you get out. Exactly, you get if out you, what you put in. If I were to just jump into a conversation with ChatGPT and say, "Write me a really good sermon on God's love," um, it would give you that B minus tenth grade English response, and it would be okay, but it wouldn't be great and it wouldn't be something useful for your members and you would probably walk away thinking that was impressive but i'm not going to use this anymore um, but if you are more specific like i've been i've been adding more and more information into uh the what i'm staging chat gpt to do or the prompts that i'm asking it for um, the more specific you are with your prompts the better the, re the replies and the responses yeah. and that leads to uh, tip number two which is give it everything you have like I, in my scenario, I already knew the topic of the sermon and the key verse. So go ahead and give it everything you already know about what you need so that it can give you responses that are more relevant and pointed. Um, also, keep trying. Don't give up. <laughs> when I first started using ChatGPT, I thought I had like that wow moment of this is incredible. But then shortly after, I thought, I don't know, this is starting to just kind of sound lame. Well, like after you initially use it and at first it blows you away and then you're like, everything seems the same. This kind of sucks. And it's yeah. not that great. Um, but it comes back to constantly thinking, OK, it's going to put out what you put into it yeah. because that's how it's designed. Yeah. And so you have to just give it more information so that way it knows what it is that you're wanting to get. Like basically, the my journey with ChatGPT was I had to sit down and watch YouTube videos like this one <laughs> of people walking through how they've used ChatGPT and what they've learned it can do so that I could see what I could do with it. Yeah. And that's why we made this video so that you could take it and use it in your ministry. Um, and last but not least, do not rely on ChatGPT. This can complement your creativity and your insight and your wisdom, but it cannot replace it. Nope. Um, ChatGPT is your sermon writing sidekick. It is not a replacement. Nope. No matter what all the fear-mongering uh, news article titles try to get you to think and feel about this, uh, just to get you to click on their article so they can get the ad revenue, ChatGPT is not writing sermons. And that's because only human beings filled with God's spirit can do that. Yeah. Um, just to offer a little word of caution, these programs will advance and they will eventually more accurately portray the way a human writes and talks and sings and creates. I mean, speaking of sings, like just the other day, uh, a song was released by Drake and The Weeknd that, that, that Drake and The Weeknd didn't write or, or record or produce at all. It was completely created by AI. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's pretty impressive for what it is. Um, got got a lot of got a lot of uh, made a big stir. Um, yeah. Uh, but don't be surprised over the next few years to see like worship songs and sermons written, you know, written entirely by an AI bot. It's already happening. It's I already have happening. a friend in Nashville who told me that every songwriting get together that all these guys are doing someone has ChatGPT open and they're using it, not necessarily to write all the songs, but they're using it to help give them ideas when they're trying to find something that rhymes with something else and stuff. It's uh, already happening, y'all, and it's kind of crazy. <laughs> so 
Um, just for one example, like I've seen some organizations using AI to act as an online chatbot in place of a real person. Mm -hmm. um, that's been around for a while in like customer support, but now we're seeing it in more complex use cases like for therapy. Yeah. Um, uh, there will be, there will likely be some ministries that look to this growing digital economy for similar uses. Um, we have to make sure that we are committed to the uh, being these incarnate beings, you know, being people who are filled with God's spirit and transmitting that to other people to give them who God is and God's love and God's light. Yeah. Um, we've already seen how these programs can be helpful tools that round out your ministry tool bag. But we risk becoming discarnate beings if we continue to rely on AI tools to replace the work that we are doing in ministry. Yeah. So how we use AI is what will determine if these new innovations usher in an era of greater evangelism or if this pushes us further into a state of discarnation. Man. That's, our, that's our little word of caution. Uh, right. That's it for how pastors can use ChatGPT. Check out the blog post linked in the description below for more prompt ideas and other AI tools you can use for your ministry. Also, be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel and let us know in the comments how you've been using ChatGPT at your church or ministry.